The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Herod the Tetrarch heard all that would have been happening, and he was greatly perplexed because some were saying, John has been raised from the dead. Others were saying, Elijah has appeared. Still others, one of the ancient prophets has arisen. But Herod said, John I beheaded. Who then is this about whom I hear such things? And he kept trying to see him. The Gospel of the Lord. Things are not always as they seem, especially from our limited perspective. I knew a physicist who was an atheist until he had this great enlightenment. He came to realize in some of the work he was doing that the laws of physics eventually break down once you get into the higher levels of that discipline. All the rules just don't work. He said, except for one thing. If you factor in a benevolent force at work toward human interests, it all makes sense. And that became the point of his conversion. It made him understand that when we look simply on a physical level, it's hard to see God. But when we really look, we can see. Herod was looking through the vision of personal interest, his own agendas, political interests, and political gain. And when Jesus stood in front of him, he couldn't see. It echoes in the book of Ecclesiastes that we have for today. All things are vanity. In other words, this author of this book is saying that the world just does not make sense except if you factor in a loving God who is caring for us. This is where Ecclesiastes is going. Strangely enough, you see something similar in slightly different words. In the Book of Wisdom, it's one of the readings that we use for funerals. What a fantastic time to look at this issue. At a funeral, when someone you love has died, how do you explain that? In the view of the foolish, the writer of wisdom says, they seem to be dead, and they're passing away, utter affliction. But they are in the hands of God, is what the Book of Wisdom concludes. So here is Herod. Who is this man about whom I hear all these things? And, he says, and it says, he kept trying to see him, but he never saw. Even though Jesus would feed 5,000, even though that Jesus would heal and the deaf would hear, and the mute would speak, and the lame would walk, and the paralyzed would rise and take up their mat. Jesus, who was the consummate exorcist, all demons running from him. And ironically, although Jesus stood in judgment in front of Herod, Herod judging Jesus, Herod could not necessarily make a judgment because he couldn't see. He had to pass Jesus off on to Pilate. However, at the end of the Gospel of Luke, 
There are two individuals who make the salient and pristine judgment. As they're standing at the cross, a thief of all people, he sees Jesus. Will you remember me when you come into your kingdom? And a centurion who pierces the heart of Christ. Now that's an interesting thing right there. That Christ would allow his heart to be pierced by a man of violence. But isn't that what he allows of all of us? With all our sins somehow related to the violence, he allows us to pierce his heart so that he could share his open heart with us. And so this centurion also stands in judgment as he sees Jesus, and his judgment is this. Truly, this was an innocent man beyond doubt. And it's when we come to the cross of Jesus Christ and see the profound love that God has for us when we see with these eyes, we see what Herod can't see. We see what scientists fail to see. We see what the world in all its inc confusion refuses to see. But we see, and one day we will see for eternity. <laughs> Oh,